Oh, it was so windy last night. There we go. Good morning, Modern Steaders. We got an inch of rain between last night and yesterday. It's crazy. It was coming down so hard last night, it blew the fence over. Oh. It wasn't like that when I locked up New York City last night. I can't get over how well this pile burnt up with all the rain we got. And there's some still hot coals going with all that rain. I don't know if you can hear that Russian noise, but that's the brook out there just raging from all the rain. You like that rock wall, Figaro? There's just standing water all over the field this morning. Just a muddy mess. This weather's even got our trees all messed up. I don't know if it'll focus or not, but they're starting to bud out already. That's just crazy. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I think the goats are g getting a little bit more used to all the wet weather. Hopefully it's preparing them for snow in winter. You gotta let me get to your bowl. If I can't get to your bowl, I can't give you any chaff hay. Yeah. All right, Willow, don't eat all theirs on them. Willow, Willow, come on, go for it. There's been a lot of questions lately, people wanting to know if we're going to get a dairy cow. I don't see us getting a dairy cow, we enjoy the dairy goats, they're a nice sized animal. Their poop isn't as messy, for us there's a lot of benefits to having the goats. We really enjoy their milk. So if we got a cow anytime soon, it'd be a beef cow. This next part, I wasn't planning on doing, but you guys keep harassing me and you convinced me to do it. And yesterday going up and over it so many times, I said, all the viewers are right. We need to make a walkway through the rock wall. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Can't get over how muddy it is. Yuck. Look how dirty the GoPro is from yesterday. Man. Muddy over here, guys. It's not even funny. Look at all that mud. Yuck. We're leaving a trail.
just see all the rocks and the rock wall fall Trying over. Trying to get these rocks to lay down the way you want them to isn't as easy as I was hoping it was gonna be. But it's a lot easier doing it with the excavator than it was when whoever originally built this rock wall, probably back in the 1800s. But these rocks kept falling in and I wanted to see where we're at and if I need to come over here and get them. I think this is fine. I don't, I don't think this one fell today. I think that one did and that one did. But we can put more rocks right here then. I want to go like eight feet and I think we're pretty close right now. If anything, I'd take down these two birch trees and then I'd have this one and that one kind of like the entrance way. Now looking at it all, I think I can take that big rock and place it right here. That's what, I'm, that's what my plan's gonna be anyways, yeah. All right guys, let's see if we can get this rock right there, laying down. size rock there. And I think if I can stand that one up. So right there we're like eight and a half feet wide. This rock looks flat and I'm hoping it is because I want to take it out, stand it up, have that as like an entryway rock. Fingers crossed it all works out.
All right, there we have about a seven and a half foot wide gateway. I wanted to stack up the end so they just look big and grand and just make it, I don't know, more aesthetically pleasing. All right, that'll be a lot easier walking through to get to New York City or whatever else is on this side of the pasture now. If you guys had a good idea, I like it. So I'm thinking I'll have to take out those four birch trees. I hate to, but I think for the health of the trees, I'm better off doing it. Just got in from running the excavator. Look at the rain coming down, guys. Oh my goodness. Can't catch a break. We're gonna carry up the pork belly into bacon that we got off of our pigs. First thing I wanna do is I wanna weigh it and see how much pork belly we got. And this is from both of the pigs. Pounds. It is, but it's not as much as last year. So 14 pounds of bacon. Awesome. So the cure that we're going to be doing is brown sugar, salt, and pepper. We've tried a few different cures, and that's what we've decided we've liked, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. We're doing an equilibrium cure, which that means is you figure out the percentage of salt, sugar, and pepper that you want, or whatever seasoning you want, and you brine them, and you let them sit in there for six to seven days, flipping it. Doing it this way, you can't over salt, which is good. We're gonna do a couple of bags, because we got so many different pork bellies. Looks so good. Can I write the weight on it after? Yep. Is this rain? That is rain. I'll take that outside. Do you want to grab a couple more bags? There we go, so zeroed. So if you want to write the weights. Um, don't. So this one's 754. Um, I grams. Just write 754. Seven eighty nine. I wrote down all the recipes in our book. So we're going to go two point two four percent salt. So point zero two two four times. 936 equals 20.9, so 21 grams of salt. So I'll take this, I'll set it aside, zero that out. The best part is this is a math class. We need 28 grams of sugar. So we're doing 3% sugar. You want to do maple syrup, brown sugar, honey. Wait, how many? 28. 28. You've got it. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll set that aside. Get one more. And then tear it out. Okay. We are not very peppery people. We're just going to be using 0.2%, 2 grams of pepper. So just a little? Just a little bit, but actually pepper don't weigh much, so it takes quite a bit. Oh, it does? Yep. Pepper is very light. I saw it still, I see it. Sure. I just like to mix these up here before we... We're going to take... I want to show you, this is a cup container, and I don't... It's not even half a cup full of the whole cure. We're gonna take it, dump it on top of the pork belly, and then go ahead and rub it. Now we just wanna cover it up nicely. The salt and everything ends up pulling moisture out of the bacon, and then it ends up going more into the bacon, and then it creates a brine and your pepper, your brown sugar, your salt 
all makes a nice fry and that gets liquefied throughout the bacon so it gets in the whole thing and absorbs pretty good. So that's why you let it sit for six to seven days so the cure can get throughout the whole slab of bacon. Try to get out as much of the air out of the bag as we can. Right here, Olivia. Good job of making the bacon. Mm -hmm. Thanks for helping. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna go stick this in our walk-in cooler. You don't gonna walk-in cooler, just keep it in your refrigerator for six to seven days. Every day I'm gonna go through. I'm just gonna turn it over once a day. And that's all we need to do. And then in a video coming up in about a week, we put in the bacon in our smoker and we'll be cold smoking it with some apple wood from the apple orchard for about an hour. We like ours lightly smoked, so we do it for an hour. If you want yours more smoked, do it longer. And that's the nice part about making your own bacon. Is at first it takes a little bit of trial and error, but then you get to find what you like and perfect the cure and the smoking to your taste buds. All right guys, I didn't turn the camera on much this afternoon once it started raining out. Wasn't much fun. We went out, collected the eggs, but it was rainy. Olivia really enjoyed having the walkway through the new rock wall. That was exciting. Gina's gone Christmas shopping with her sisters. I'm gonna go lock up New York City and then milk Willow. And I'm... I hope you guys don't mind. That was just kind of a setup for today's video. It's the next day when I was editing the video and I was trying to come up with a good thumbnail and title for the video and I almost broke my neck the other day. Everybody keeps telling me I gotta take the rock wall out so I don't break my neck. And I was trying to think of a good way to picture that and make a thumbnail for it. So uh, I hope you don't mind. I was just having a little bit of fun. So I just wanted to thank everybody for coming along on our journey with us. And I want to encourage you to just start. Our homestead here, I mean, our homesteading endeavor started 12 years ago. The first thing we got into was, was worms one winter, composting worms in the basement. Then we started with a garden, then we got some chickens, then some turkeys and some pigs, and three place and three houses later, we're here at what we call Lumna Acres. So 12 years later, it's just crazy. I want to thank everybody from the bottom of our heart for coming along on our journey with us. And if you guys want to do this, it don't matter if you're in an apartment, if you're living in your parents' house, if you're still a kid, just start somewhere. Start reading. Start with a worm, go worm garden. Start with worm composting. Start with a tomato plant. Just start. And you'll get there someday. We're still not where we want to be, but we're on our way. So thanks for coming along on our journey with us. We really appreciate you being here. If you're at this point in the video, I'm really thankful that you guys are here. You watch the videos all the way through. You are the modern steaders. I just want to thank you. It just puts a big smile on my face that you guys watch the videos as much as you do. We wouldn't be able to do what we do here without you. So we love you, and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.